I felt it was time to make another parameter update video because it has been some time now and I have made some really good progress. So since the video about version 3.1 here, I went on to create version 3.2 and then this version here which is 3.3 which is installed on my other everyday automatic bike and I've done a lot of good testing on that over one and a half thousand miles and in the process of improving it from version 3.2 to 3.3 I managed to get way better power data and four times the battery life. So I'm going to go into what I did in this video and some other improvements on things that I've learnt along the way. And this one uses my board um, that I created for the HX711 and the intention after this video is to do the same to this parameter as I have done to this one. So weatherproof the strain gauges and sort out the electronics. And then that will go back on the other bike. When I created version 3.2 I switched to the Nano Every. I found these to be better at managing the interrupts, so you end up with less corrupted data. I got one of my HX711 boards, and as you can see, I put the crystal on it to up the sample rate. The reason it's done like that, I will go into perhaps on another video. And to power it, I used the same two cell LiPo pack. So this will be 7.8 volts. Approximately, take that and feed it into the VN pin of the Arduino. The Arduino's regulator gives you 5 volts, and then I take that regulated power to the HX711 board, which has a regulator on board as well, which is set to a default of 2.7 volts. So that would then step that down again with a second regulator. And then that goes to the excitation voltage for the strain gauges. So I thought two regulators, more the better. Well, turns out that's not the case. A typical discharge curve of a lithium cell looks something like that. And what I noticed as I was using the power meter was that in this zone here, where you've got this curvature, I was getting a drift of the zero value in one direction and then when it got to this zone I was getting drift in the opposite direction and then in this area here in the middle the drift was fairly minimal it was still a problem but fairly minimal so it seemed rather odd I don't really know what was going on but there must be some interaction between the switching frequency of the different regulators these um, new nano ebris have a different regulator on them, supposedly more efficient, but I'm really not a big fan of them. They seem to be quite noisy, so they do cause quite a lot of noise on the ADC if you're measuring voltages. Um, so I don't know if anyone knows how that could be some sort of interaction there, but definitely I was noticing quite significant problems where the curvature of this line seemed to be the greatest. Here is a summary of the power error between the two parameters, mine and some Garmin pedals. As can be seen, quite a significant difference between ride averages, up to 10, 20 watts, and that's due to non-temperature related drift. The red line is where I was messing around with the calibration value, trying to get the average error to be around about minus 5 watts, and that's based on my left-right power balance. So typically my right leg is around about 2 to 4% weaker than the left leg. Before we go on to the summary for version 3.3, let's have a look at some data that was recorded with that power meter. The Purple is the Garmin pedals, and that was transferred from Ant Plus to Serial for the Arduino on the automatic shifting. 
um, via an NRF 52 board. The red is my power meter and the error is an orange. Generally the error is quite small but quite spiky and that's due to timing differences when data was received. Here's a fine example of where there was, was a little bit of temperature drift. Uh, soon sorted by zeroing the power meter again. Generally the error is fairly consistent regardless of whether the power output is low or high. So generally very pleased with the, the results. And here's the summary of our 100 tests I did with version 3.3. That's around a thousand miles worth of ride. Here's a graph where I compensated for my left right power balance which turned out to probably not be worth bothering doing that. As I discovered the uh, average I was getting on my spreadsheet for the Garmin pedals was actually sometimes quite significantly different to the average that the Garmin Connect app was getting. So I get too bogged down in the exact averages is probably not worth it. And there's probably about two to four watts of error on some of these rides, which was just due to temperature drift, which I didn't zero out the power meter on a sunny day. So generally, I'm very happy with this data. I think it's a huge improvement on what I had before. And it's definitely more than good enough for my purposes. And this is how I got better data and battery life. Switch the two cell pack or a single cell, like I probably should have done from the very beginning. That means I can bypass the 5 volt regulator and feed the cell voltage directly to the chip on the Arduino and also to the HX711 board. Now I can't completely use all of the energy in the cell. Due to the power latch circuit, I can only discharge it down to 3.45 volts and I charge it up to 4.1 which is good for the cell anyway. For the next version, I'm going to use this free, secondhand, used once, rather fruity smelling cell, which is rated at 550 milliamp hours. You might be able to guess where that's come from. And finally, let's have a look at the battery or cell lifetime. Now, the two cell pack has around about 60% of the capacity of this single cell. But I'm actually only using around about 65-70% of the single cell watt hours. Um, so the real saving comes from the fact that although the current for the single cell version isn't significantly less, I think it's around about 30, low 30 milliamps instead of around 40 something. The real saving comes from the fact that we're obviously working at half the voltage, so it's less than half the power. So very much a win-win, and it makes such a huge difference having around 17 hours of life rather than four and a half, because if you're down at about 10% on the capacity, you can still go for a ride and complete the ride, whereas 10% with the version 3.2 probably only lasted about 20 minutes at best. So that's it for this video and thank you for watching.